Welcome back to the Faux Scotland Report, where today we have the foe. Oh, wait. Wait, wait for it. No, the Yosef. Okay, you know what, actually? A surprising guest, the foe is not here this week. However, we do have the Scott, which is yours truly. We have the silent we. And we have the man. I am the man. Didn't have to caress your stick on the mic. But with all that being said, today's topics are going to get pretty heated, especially my first. Of course. Uh, do we want to start off with mine? Or do we I, wanna, you can start honestly, with I think we should. Because <coughs> mine could probably fit in well. It could, like, head trans off to yours. Yeah, a little bit. Well, with that all being said, uh, let's get this topic out of the world. Some of the viewers, maybe uh, one of the ones that see this on Scarlet Inc., will be know exactly what I'm talking about. Parker and uh, uh, the man and we included are all going to know about this at our school. And I mean, the foe does. but The foe does, but he's not here. tragically, he is not here. But with all that being said, when being a teacher or a substitute, you have a lot of power in your hands, being able to tell the kids to be quiet. Doing their homework, such as the course, you know, all that other stuff. But I feel like to some substitute or teacher's head, heads kind of go crazy with power. And I don't want to call out names, but I think everyone knows who I'm going to be talking about. Let, Especially let's call her right Leslie. I just thought of a random name, Leslie. Leslie. Let's call her Leslie. Leslie... Uh, let's start off with the first, uh, the first interaction oh, with Leslie. Oh, dear Lord, don't in, even get me started. <laughs> in journalism. Guys, you guys can correct me if I can't, my memory's not the best. But, we had a sub, as in, uh, Mrs. Kerr was, uh, not in class. Yeah, I, I believe that was when her kids were going through yeah. some sickness thing, Something which is still going on, apparently, because there's a weird COVID mix-up at their school, but... Yeah, but with all that being said, our parents, kids were gone, so, uh, not kids, though. Miss Kerr was gone due to her kids. So we had a sub, not thinking much of it. And with that journalism date, we didn't have much work to do due to... We were, we were still working on our, our yearbook pages. We were yeah, working on semester. yearbook pa- pages. We were all basically kind of finished at the point with mine. I was at least with mine. I was almost done. And I, I was helping Peyton with his by yes. halfway through the class. And so. the foe was just minding his own dang business. I think he was either reading a book or like scrolling through his book. Uh, no, because remember, he didn't know how to log in for a right. long time, yeah, so he I had to help. Yeah, that. so so he spent 20 minutes trying to figure out how to get in. And then, like, well, Peyton goes, boop, and he's just like, what? <laughs> With all that being said, the sub, out of nowhere, what, who, did she go after your throat first? I think she went after Joey's first, because he was invisible. Yeah, I don't think she liked and, and then she went after me for talking to Peyton. Then yeah. she went after me... Then I, I kind of returned. I kind of yeah, returned, returned fire. fire. I actually like how Nathan didn't like get cut through it with her until our, maybe until, like, until our second instance, which will come up. Right yeah, which will come up later. I mean, I did have a little instance with her, mostly because I was getting pissed off that everyone else was like, you know, oh, getting mad. Because like her going at you, and then you, and then out of nowhere pulling foe fo- into it because like he wasn't verbally bad at no he, the, at the sub at all. At he Leslie. wasn't even talking. None no, of us were. He didn't talk. I am actually pretty sure he Wait, didn't speak I think a we were whispering word. most most of the time because she yeah. told us to be quiet. Well, because so me, you, and Peyton, I know for a fact we talked to her. I don't think Joey talked to her at all. Oh, yeah, at all. He stayed silent. Seen. And Leslie still went for her his throat out of nowhere. I know. And, so dumb. Oh, what was it? Uh, what was it? One of the main things, part of it, was that she thought we weren't on uh, uh, on. Topic. Yeah, we yeah. weren't on topic. We weren't doing anything. No, clearly we were because we all flipped our Chromebooks around. Like the only one who wasn't was Joey, but he was trying to get in. Yeah, he to was doing yeah. his work. He was literally he, trying like so hard. He was getting frustrated. Which Wallsworth, which is the website we use, is a little is a little wonky. I'm not gonna so, lie. Yeah, I mean sometimes the login, like yeah. even if you press Remember Me, it'll log you out, and you have to use the most weird password because you have to come up with some really complicated. Yeah. Thing, so, but with all that being said, I don't know where like. Then she pulls out these snacks at the end, giving them all okay. to the girls. Okay, look. So, so for context with these snack things, too. Look, I I really hope our school doesn't rat us out for this. But look, I'm gonna be honest. So this lady, from what I heard from the girls, because she's biased towards the girls. Oh yeah, the girls know everything. Definitely. Better. The and girls it. in our class, apparently Leslie only can like only taught or only could teach grade school 
The only reason why she went to the high school was because of the substitute shortage, because, you know, our school is having a crisis. And so that's why she was there, and that's the tactic she uses with the little kids. I'm sorry. Like, I know you mean well to be nice, but we are nearly adults. We're year, we're basically almost young adults, I would say. Yeah, well, Go with that. I mean, some of the seniors <coughs> are legally adults, and I'm a couple years away. Yeah, and I'm just like, look, I'm not a, I'm not little. I don't want to be distracted by things. I actually want to do my stuff. Yeah, and uh, even with that said, I think she did say something. The story, like you guys are freshmen, and then we and then we are all making the joke that Parker was a underclassman because yeah, most, most I'm of the a, class because seniors. I'm a sophomore. Yeah, and he's like, well, Parker obviously made a joke. She didn't get it because, I don't know, she has a thick skull. But the entire the entire thing, <laughs> holy schmoly, it was just so much. It was a train wreck. And, oh, but then, like, the next day when Mrs. Kirk came back, even, like, even the girls who were being, you know, treated better than we oh, yeah. were for no reason, even they were like, yeah, no. Oh, yeah, Haley, Haley, uh, the, the dime. The died, yeah. The died stood up for us during the time. She did, and God, God bless, God bless the girls in their classroom. We're not like targeting them at all. Well, yeah, they they actually stood up for stood us. up for us, which is even though remarkable. I mean, even though usually I love we, it. Usually, we are the ones who are talking in that class and are disrupting a little bit. I I hold my eternal gratitude to the dying and to the ab for standing up. For oh me. yeah, uh, and uh, clap and a half for uh, those those girls. Uh, and every other girl in, in, in journalism, they're awesome, they're nice. Uh, but the other thing was that we were, she just didn't want us to talk at all. Oh, yeah. But then, at the very end of class, she was like, oh yeah, but you can talk for the last ten minutes, because that's what we just didn't act. talk. <laughs> we yeah, we didn't talk. Silent. That's just because there was only was, three minutes left. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's so three minutes left. She's like, usually I let kids talk at ten minutes left of the class. And she never told us any of that. Well, also, so even worse, I've had to do with her, uh, well, the, the first instance, because now you have her in multiple classes. I have her in multiple classes. I had her, I had COVID, her my, for teachers. I had, I had her in my study hall, because I, I had study hall in that exact same room in the first semester. I had switched. I now have fifth period study hall. But she was also in my study hall, and she tried talking to me and stuff, and this is where our favorite line of the day popped up. I usually at the beginning of study hall was when like I took a bathroom break for my day. I don't know why. That was, oh, that was always goodness. when I had to go to the bathroom. So I walk up, I give her my planner so she can sign me out. I'm like, can I go to the bathroom? I really have to go. I've been holding it in for a hot minute. Yeah. And then she's like, she pulled it. I don't know. Can you? It's actually, and, and then she went on a rant about how it's may I go to the bathroom. Oh my gosh, she did that today in Consumer Ed. Yeah. yeah. She, oh. <coughs> and the same thing happened because she came back due to our teachers getting COVID. Uh, that being Mr. Lee. Uh and uh, uh, oh, wag. Miss Miss Wegg, the Wegg, the Wegg, and bless Miss Wegg's heart, best teacher, almost one of the best teachers I would say. You know, well, like honestly, the weird thing is that all my friends who have had her don't like her. I think she's perfect. I think fine. she's great. Yeah. She's just Mrs. Wegg. You a real G? Yeah, <laughs> she's great because she follows the rules. She still is like funny at times. She, she actually just, she does to, her job. She actually correct. tries to help you too. If you yes, don't get she acts like she she's she acts like a normal person. I'm sorry <laughs> yeah, to say that. That's like that, and, but it's, it's, and like uh, she does I can see where pain is coming from because normal people are rare today. Yeah. But that just but she sad. doesn't put up a front is what yeah, I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. She doesn't put up a front. She just acts like how she normally does. But she tries to stay professional in that yes, sense. Yes, and she well. stays usually professional. Obviously, jokes being passed every now and then. But at the same time, mostly stays professional. Probably the reason why your friends don't like her is because they uh, goof around a little. Well, you know, I mean, like I, I goof around, but th- th- this is a high school, so I, I put into account that everyone in the school should act more upfront and mature in certain circumstances because we are older. Mm-hmm. But also, like it's more acceptable to pass around jokes and stuff oh, yeah. at this age than it is when you're, when you're kids because we know better. So we know our limits. We know yeah. how far we go. So that's on us if we mess up. See? And, yes. m- and Mrs. Wegg understands that perfectly. Oh yeah, and, and she. And but like, Leslie doesn't. No, see? she. I don't know what. I don't know what it, her problem is. I don't think she's ever talked to like a person her age because what Miss Kerr said was she tried to have a conversation with her, and Miss Kerr just told us that it was super hard to do that. Of course. of course. And I don't really know much else. She didn't tell us much else about it, but 
With that being said, I think that's enough to say that she kind of has. Ooh. <laughs> uh, well, let's but, talk about but, our. What? Well, yeah. Our, our, the thing that happened to me yesterday. My, my throat's still a little bit raspy, but my, yesterday my throat was super raspy. You were like, I wasn't, coughing the whole time. I was coughing, and then I'm, I'm like, halfway through when I'm coughing, I'm just like trying to hold my breath in so I don't cough because I don't want to make people like look at me or just go. So I'm just like. Oh, the, it's, it's trying just, to hold. It's like, just those like dying coughs. Yeah, yeah. the dying it's coughs. Horrible. The coughs like you, when you have a, like a raspy like throat and you have those coughs. And of course, I have to have these coughs during a COVID outbreak. So people are just like, just like moving away from me. And I'm like, I get it, but like yeah. at the same time, come on. I mean, I don't need to. Okay. Yeah. To be fair, this whole COVID thing is just getting out of hand. It is getting a bit out of hand. I but mean, that's another topic, guys. We need to keep complaining the about this. Or doesn't get <laughs> slightly. <laughs> not targeting anybody in the post comment report. That was report. the number one rule of post comment report. We do not. I'm just going we're to not get you. political. We. I, I I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. This is scrolling out. Of Go ahead and plead the Go fifth ahead. because you can't plead the first. To quote Ray, <coughs> that's a very good thing. Please. Well, with that being said, continuing on, I had a really th- uh, raspy voice. I, as Parker said, uh, I was coughing a crap ton. And I was trying to, like, my best not to hold it in. At that point, my throat was getting super dry, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to give myself a, a drink. I wasn't thinking, like, too much, and I'm like, and I, uh, I, I'll go to the door since, so like, there's a drinking fountain maybe, like, ten feet away from, yeah. the, from the class. You and I'm take like, a turn, and, there you and go. I'm like, I'm going to go get a drink uh, of water. I'm uh, dying. <laughs> my thro- I have a really raspy throat voice. And throat, sorry. And she just looks at me, and she's like, that's not how you ask to do she, that. She, she straight up yelled at you. Did she? she? I didn't. I didn't notice. But like, she raised her voice. Like, I'm like, dude. I mean, yeah. I would have preferred if I was in a position of authority to say, "Hey, can I go get a drink of water?" Yeah. yeah. But then she put the <laughs> may I thing, and look, I get that there is a there is a difference between may I and can I. I don't see it. But at the same time, we shouldn't like be teaching people that that's wrong because can I go do something? Like I've always been taught, at least by my dad, that. That, that that is a respectful way of asking. You you can say may I, but can I is basically the exact same form. Yeah, yeah. I feel like can I and may I are the same thing, but at the same time, she just takes it so seriously. And at this point, well, after like that happened, I was like, I just she, and then, then like I just I look at I look at Parker. And I'm yeah, like, <laughs> he was so funny. And I just like and then I go, may I go get a drink? And she's like, not without a pass. And I'm like, and then she, then she went and got you a pass. It was so. Funny. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my god. And I then I go get a drink, I come back and place it, and then I go put my headset back on because I she's not uh, Miss Wager Miss uh, Miss Wang's down there to uh, tell me not to wear a headset because like when I'm not working, when we're like she's doing notes, I wouldn't wear a headset, obviously. Yeah. But like there's she, no notes being done, well, so I mean, I'm able to wear my headset. Well, I mean, right now, since she's gone, we're just doing this all on our own. Yeah. Chromebooks. So, so that's why I keep my headset in. Hence why also I don't want to listen to Leslie. Yeah. But at the same time Another instance that happens oh. is that I'm just having my headset. I'm just typing away on my computer. I'm, I'm doing D and D stuff, ner- nerdy things, and I'm listening to music. And I don't realize I'm doing the little the little leg jake. And, I mean, like yeah, everyone taps their foot. And I will admit, I did not have headphones in, so I could hear. It wasn't loud, and it wasn't a lo- like it wasn't to a volume that was unusual. Yeah, I'm like yeah, I can hear it, but I do it too. Like, yeah, I was doing it as you were doing it, so I'm just like, ah. like <laughs> me and him are doing it right now. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. It's... And it, she's like, Nathan, Nathan, and I'm just like, I'm wearing my headset, and I can definitely hear her. Because at this point, I'm just like, I'm not. I'm just gonna ignore you're just, her. You're just acting like you're either listening to something so loud, or they're just straight up noise canceling. Yeah, and then she finally gets my uh, thing. She's like. I don't know, like, I don't know the exact words she said, but, like, the, she just said the leg thing was annoying. I'm like, okay. And I put my headset back on. I continue doing it as I type away. So and I'm like, okay, I get it that you're annoying. You can ask me to stop or, like, I mean, not even ask me. It's just a human thing to do. I can't stop it. So same thing happened early in the class. I don't know if you heard this, obviously, because I assume you were listening to something in your headphones, just not super loud. Probably. And... So, The Young, who has been featured on our podcast yep, a couple times, yep. he was in, he sits on the opposite end of the room for me. I sit on one wall, he sits on the other. And uh, he was, like, kind of shaking his desk a little bit, but he was working. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard this part. Yeah, I Understandable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
I, I, I didn't did. even hear. I had one of my head like ears out. I still, I barely heard it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad, and like again, understandable. We will like every single person ends up shaking a desk if they're working yeah. hard. Yeah, it, I mean, I get that it's annoying because like every but time it, you're writing, like it, Jesus, like, a desk could... Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, yeah, you, you guys got Trump. Good to go. I mean, I love Jesus, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then bag. and then uh-huh. she does the exact same thing to the young. And tells yeah. them to stop moving. But like, I mean, I get it. Like, st- like to stop making the noise. But at the same time, it's kind of hard to not do that because, like, if you're typing or writing, the desk is gonna move either way. So I just don't know what's going through her head. Yeah. But at the well, same time, she offers snacks. Never accepted. It I once. mean, honestly, she, she has Twix bars in there, and Twix bars are my favorite kind of candy bar. <laughs> That woman makes me not want to get up and grab my favorite. And that's bar. saying something. That is saying that something. That is saying something. Parker, who loves like he loves Katie, loves Twix, doesn't get a Twix for her. And no, that's saying I can't. something. I I have eaten Twix in so many different situations, and I've gotten them from so many shady people at gas stations, okay? Cashiers. Cashiers. No one else. <laughs> but Whatever you say, Parker. <laughs> but like she makes me like I wouldn't say I'm intimidated. I'm j i am feel unpleasant. Around. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Like, I'm not intimidated because I have acted like a jerk to her because, like, the past few times she's talked to me, she has this tone. It's very pessimistic, very just stern. And obviously, the first time I interacted wow. with her, she would accuse me of stuff I wasn't doing. Oh, yeah. So, Definitely. naturally, I wouldn't say I'm petty, but you're not doing something to me that I don't like, and I'm not doing something back to you. I, I, I don't let things slide. So I just make my voice super deep, and I just give her one-worded answers and brush her off. I'm like, I'm yeah. not talking to you. <laughs> I remember you told me about that, where you just, like, make your voice deeper, and you're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, at the same time, sorry. Need to report. And then, I mean, like, today I had to take my Chromebook down to the office because it was dying. And surprisingly, she didn't say the whole May, I think, because I said, can I go to the office? That's all I said. Yeah. And then... Probably forgot that, you know, probably forgot about our own May I rules. <laughs> And then she's like, yeah, but, yeah, but can you take the attendance down? And I'm like, of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, sure. And I'm like, look, I, I don't like being mean to authority figures because, yeah. I mean, I've always been taught not to. But if you rub me off the wrong way, you yeah. don't have my respect. And I'm I, sorry, yeah. Leslie, but you don't have my respect. Oh, yeah, I, I agree with you full-heartedly with, like, not being rude to people. But at the same time... I'm going to give you at least somewhat a snotty remark or something of the sort, just to feel like, get, getting back, trying to give her a, a feeling that, you know, you're not doing your job right. <laughs> well, either way, like, even during class when she's not either asking us questions or being pessimistic towards us, she's on her phone. She's on her phone. It's not even silent. She did call. No. It, it, no. It's, she calls people yeah, during class. she calls class. people during what? class. Wait, what? Yes. She marketing did that. class. She did marketing. marketing. She called three different people. She had to make an appointment for her brother-in-law. Yep. Had to do that same call, like, again. Yeah. And then she called someone named Katie. Who's Katie? <laughs> who's Katie? <laughs> Leslie, who's Katie? We need to know. Oh, my God. The, the, the volume bar went out. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it went red. But yeah, I mean, sorry for any use. I mean, yeah, headphones. this this is just proving. I could I could this hear is the just blood proving how coming down from this is. Because we truly, truly are passionate about this. Yes, passionate about our non-existent respect for this person. Oh yeah, and that's the thing too. Because like other, and I get I get the schools like like reasoning because you know well, they I mean, need substitutes. Which I'm, I, I'm like at the right point now. where I'm like, hey, I'm gonna call my brother Tristan, who's gonna be the drama director soon for our school. Oh, fine. and I'm like, I'm like, hey, you need to be a sub now. Well, like, because the sucky part is, I know two of our teachers currently got COVID, and a couple subs are just unavailable because oh. we're rotating the same like three, and the, they're filling the jobs for other teachers. And so we're running super low. And, um, you know, the English 2 teacher, she got the flu to start the week. So we didn't even have class in the room. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you're fine. Um, I'm coughing a lot. We had to have class in the cafeteria. Oh, oh yeah, that reminds this me. This just proves how, how understaffed our school is right now. And yet, Leslie is the best we can... I could get up and teach that class and do a better job. Oh, well, definitely. You want to know why? Because I've actually taught classes before. 
<laughs> so, I mean, yes, I have taken over for teachers. At one time where literally our school was so understaffed, they didn't even get a substitute for my class. So I got up and I taught our class. So, okay, another thing. You, thank you for reminding me. Uh, Gabe. Gabe Law. We'll go with Law. The Law. The Law. Uh, I remember he was telling me this. Uh, and uh, the phone was right next to him, too. If he was close here, he would agree with me. She was walking around for some odd reason going to like our our study hall classes. And she went to the people that have the college classes. Uh a little a little hint here. College class people sometimes don't have classes in the morning. Uh means, yeah. meaning that, you know they just hang around. They just hang around. They they have nowhere else to so, hang out. I mean, uh, sometimes like the school will let them just not show up during first bell. They can yeah. just, they can go get like breakfast and stuff and then they show up during like second period. Yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, Miss Stropes, I believe, uh, Miss Stro was uh, uh, was sitting around next to him, just like you know, monitoring monitor them, which is understandable. Leslie gets up from her chair <sighs> and walks her hiney. Can I say a bad word? Sure. Her hiney ass, but hiney bleep <laughs> to the other side of the cafeteria, goes to the lull. It is, it like, he, he switched tabs because he was working, which the foe was also doing the same. They were all working. And she just automatically accuses that he's playing games, and she's like, you better not be playing games during time like this. And, like, just keeps walking. And, get, and, and then Lala just, like, has, he just goes straight off. He's like, do you want to see my Chromebook? Do you want to see the games that I'm playing? But let me guess, it's just tabs of work. Yeah, it was tabs of work. She's just like, she's just, she's like I'm just saying. And I'm like, oh. Just She's just not giving herself a good, like, look on anything. I mean, like, literally everyone who's had her as a sub, I have heard bad things. Which, like, honestly, going to the school about it and just complaining, I think, wouldn't really fix the issue. No. So Scott what are we doing? We're going to complain on the post Scotland report and hope the school <laughs> sees this. What's up, guys? Hello, Mr. DeBailey. Mr. DeBale. DeBabe. DeBabe. No, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. That was bad. That was bad. Hey, cut it out. That was bad. Cut that out. Mr. DeBale is better. Don't clip it. Mr. De. Mr. Uh, DeBay. 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 Yeah. DeBay. That's better. That's better. DeBay. Um, but yeah. DeBay. This topic, DeBay. man. We've, we've been going on on this, man. Oh, We're dude. Really how long are we at? Well, I mean, even worse. Half though, an hour right now. Half an hour. So even worse is that in, in the marketing class, which is the only class I have with her right now. Think. Thine Lord. <laughs> I have I have first period study hall and fourth period marketing with her. But so Mrs. Wegg got COVID, so she can't show up for a hot minute, depending on how bad her COVID is. <laughs> and so we're gonna have this woman for potentially a while. For the next week, for possibly the end of this week, and then maybe halfway through the next week. I mean, when when my dad got COVID, he got it for two weeks. So let's just say Mrs. Wegg gets it for two weeks. We have two weeks. We have two weeks of this. Two weeks. No. And this is only the first week. This is this is one interaction. We talked about one interaction with her, and then maybe, what, three days worth of like her being with her. So you best believe there's a part two to this. Post <laughs> Next Wednesday is going to be a hoot. It's going to be a hoot. It's going <clears> to... <throat> I mean, like, all the subs at our school, there, there's only one I, I actually kind of like. But all the other ones, like... They're just bad. Yeah, like, they're just, like, they're not... They don't really uphold authority. Like, one time, there was a sub in my English class, and I told you all The Dark Knight is my favorite movie. So I so I went on Fang, uh, uh, Fandango's YouTube channel and just played the movie through clips. And we got to the scene where the Joker blows up the police precinct, and I played it on full volume. Spoilers, by the way. Spo- <laughs> spoilers for a 14-year-old movie. Yes, spoilers. One of the most popular movies of our of our century. But yeah, so breaking news: Joker blows up the police precinct. But when <sighs> but when he like I had it on full volume, she goes boom, and then like, the lady's like, "Can you turn that down, please?" And I turned it down one, and she didn't care. And then, I mean, and then with Leslie here, man, I'm just afraid that if I if I if I accidentally bump my elbow on the desk, I'm getting you're gonna cause you're gonna I'm, cause. Get, I'm getting prosecuted like. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna cause <laughs> Armageddon by accidentally <laughs> dropping your pencil. <laughs> like, no, like, I, like, I was thinking of scenarios wow. to go to the office and get my Chromebook, 
without having to interact with her, but I realized I would end up being tardy to the class, and I knew I'd get out talking to, so I'm like, man, I have to talk to this woman. Oh my goodness. I mean, hopefully Mrs. White comes back soon. This is like if you're watching, please, this, please come back to us. Please, <laughs> please, at least just do it virtually. I will set up your Promethean board for you. <laughs> yeah, we will have, we will put, we will put list uh, a bit. Uh, we'll put Leslie in the back, make her read a book, do her calls, you whatever know, works, and we'll just suck. eyes all on you. You teach us. Another thing about Les GTFO is this: when you're working, she'll just randomly talk to somebody or to you. Yeah. Oh yeah, because because sure. the reason is she hates quiet. She hates quiet, but at the she same time, quiet. she wants us to be quiet too. Uh, are you in our study hall, right? No, you're not. I'm in fifth period. Okay, so I I was talking to Tim. Ah, uh, the oh. Tim himself. The niece. I was talking to niece, and like the bell rang because we were both there beforehand. We were talking about D and D, of course. Naturally. And, uh, naturally. And, and she's like, hey, hey, you guys, the class, the class started, and, uh, and, and, she, and we're like, okay. And she's like, and then she, and then she dramatically, with, ha- with how, however, how much she can, she tried to look up the, the, the time, and then look back at us, she's like, that means you guys gotta be quiet. And I'm like, but then, but then we, then we both said, we don't got any work to do. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure in first period study hall, the majority of people, unless they, unless they're the type of people who procrastinate, probably already have their work done. Probably work done or are asleep, which is what I do basically. <laughs> I'm so and happy. I'm of not course, not me and Tim like stop talking, but like at the same time, she's just so confusing. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> look, <laughs> like I will be willing to be unpaid without a teacher certificate. Which I'm pretty sure she doesn't have on it. Oh, definitely not. Just to at least go over notes or something with my class. Because, I, honestly, it, it is better for school to have, like, an environment where someone is teaching you it. It has yeah. been proven that it is better learning-wise. Now, granted, for some reason, my grades go up when I don't have a teacher. So maybe I'm just the outlier in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, honestly... I, I'm like, just let me be a sub, okay? Like, come on, it's not. You heard it right here, folks. Man, man for next substitute, Mr. Man, Mr. Man. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's rough. It, it, it it's about it's a rough week. week. Yeah, it's and it's week. only Wednesday. <laughs> it's only. Oh my week. God, this is honestly our ent- out of our entire years of high school. This has been the worst week so far. This really? Week? Yes. This I mean, week I just happy. because, this week just because week. of her. And that's the thing. Her, how, many, class. how many classes do you have her? Uh, I have two classes up with her. I'm surprised you haven't flipped out yet. Oh my god, you have, dude! You have no you were, idea how you were hard. this close to flipping out on her the first time. You met her. <laughs> yeah, you were like that. You like back. I like, <laughs> I was up and ready to lay was about someone out. Jiu-jitsu. Like you, like I could hear you like just groan because you sit right next to me, so I heard you groaning and stuff. I heard like, him singing the cursed alphabet. Yeah, yeah, practically. He was like, your, your voice sounded like a backhand slap. And I'm like, no. I was scared and I was sitting next to him. I easily get scared of, like, when people are mad, I get scared. Yeah. It's just a thing with me. But with Peyton, I could, I could hear his blood boiling. Kid you not. I could hear it. But I oh kind, kind of ironic that we heard I am a gentle person, by the way. <laughs> Very ironic that we heard the diabetics blood boil. <laughs> <laughs> that was not an insult. That was not an insult. He, he's I can approve. He can that, 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 that was a good one. I make worse, by the way. No, no, no. Diabetic cyst. Yeah, but... Oh, holy man. Long story short, school. I need a job. Even though I... That, and also, as, as I said with power, power comes great responsibility. And may... <laughs> Aunt May didn't say that. Aunt May said that. Uncle Ben said it. In no way home. Aunt May said it. Spoiled no way home. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay, because I already know the spoilers, because nobody's putting spoiler tags on their posts about it, so I'm scrolling, yeah, and they're yeah. like, ah, bah, 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 bah. And, and you're just like, okay, thanks, movie rude. Yeah, so, 
Man, we are at 37. We're, oh, we are we only, went on almost an entire rant on that. That's my topic. But, yeah, with that all being said, at the very end, you're becoming a teacher or a substitute. Hence, my cousin uh, Carly becoming a, sub- uh, a teacher. She's amazing. She was. She's helping me with college, even. Know your place. <laughs> even though we are little children. Know your stuff. Yeah, know, know your, your stuff. stuff. I, know, I know Carly. She knows her stuff pretty well. You're amazing. Uh, but with all that being said... Know your stuff, which is pretty simple as you becoming a teacher. But most importantly, know that you're teaching other people. These people have feelings and have thoughts and can totally just, like, do that. Because I remember we all – everybody in journalism talked to Kershaw. Kershaw went to the uh, uh, debate and in the end probably didn't even talk to her because if you think about it – or kind of super low on substitutes. Oh well, yeah, well, because, because that's more money and getting put into substitutes. And you don't want to take off though, because you already know dang well that you're probably gonna. You said a real name. Oh, is it? Is it? We we, we said it. Well, well now now you ruined it. <laughs> Time to blame it, it out, out boys. Cut it out. Cut it out. I will. I, will. I thought it was Leslie. Is it, did we go with Leslie? What? Leslie's the name that we're going with. Oh, just bleep out the <laughs> part where I said her name. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so let's, let's move on. Uh, but yeah, with all that being said, just you know, know that you're being, you know, be nice. Yeah, <laughs> be so, nice. Okay. Anyways, so next topic after uh, four of our forty minutes. So <laughs> as per <laughs> usual, my topics do flow into one another, and I thought this one flowed pretty well. Talking about pet peeves, right? Mm. And of course, I have too many. And of course, Leslie over here. <laughs> She is a pet peeve. She is a pet peeve. <laughs> and put her in a category. We have to, you know what? The Next, pet peeve tier list. Pet peeve tier list. The Faux Scotman Report. The Faux Scotman Report pet peeve tier list. It's okay. We're going we're gonna to get it ready, set up for next time. It is good because I actually have a tier maker account linked up with my Twitter account that I don't do you think, use. Do you think by chance we could probably hook it up to the, uh, to the other Oh, definitely. Party? Probably? Um, yeah, oh, yeah, because uh, we just open Chrome. We can go into tier maker. I can log in my account. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. We'll do that for Faux Sky Report Part 14, is it? 14, yeah, 15. Yeah. 14. I will work on it when, when I can. But, um, so I thought I'd just like to have a conversation about what are, out of the multitude of pet peeves that you could potentially have, what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, I know it. My biggest pet peeve is the judgment face. Now, you may be thinking, oh, what, yeah, what is yeah, that? And then, I like, when people go, or, like, and not jokingly, like no, not like, jokingly. Seriously. seriously, even when like sometimes jokingly, it just gives me like that, uh, like that bad feeling. Yeah. And I don't know why. I feel like it was probably because when I was a younger age, I was much more of a weird dumb kid, and like you know, doing like just having fun and doing whatever. And all the time, it would always be the the popular girls or somebody oh. else or like some somebody okay. looking at me and I they would like, just judge me and I would like, like to pause it would hurt my feelings for, uh, for, for the popular girls you know who you are you know who you are I don't respect you I somewhat respect you as a person because I, I that feels that that's that's that, that's a bit mean but <laughs> a little bit too far a little bit but. too far there there uh, uh, the man but with all that being said I despise it even when my friends do it sometimes like jokingly it still like gets me like angered because I it, it just happens so often and being judged like it always just hurts because yeah. it feels like oh you're not doing it right but like you're just doing what makes you happy yeah so with all that being said it just hurts I just hate it that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves I have a few others but I just can't think of them off the top of my head but now we get to the porn person with pet peeves mm-hmm. we what's yours biggest my peeve. my biggest pet peeve. Matter, I would say no matter where you're from, no matter who the hell you are, always show respect to others. Always, because respectfulness. And, uh, I wonder if this is targeted to anybody. You know? Huh. Huh. Whoa! Huh. Whoa! Huh. 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 Wonder. Huh. Well, not huh. not necessarily who you're thinking of, but other people. But, but other, other people. people, yes. But yes, if you're not from around an environment you do not know, you just don't come in. Like you know what you're doing, know who everybody is. You just don't do that and think yeah. you're a big shot. No, you show signs of respect to the ones who are already there. Right. And you re- show respect to everybody else. Yeah, because yeah. in point. return they will show respect to you and not you know hold a grudge. Yeah, um, it's almost like we're holding a grudge. I 
I do agree with that. Although this I, is a friendly podcast. Although I wouldn't say that's one of my biggest ones. I definitely agree with like respectfulness needs to be in all situations. Oh, yeah. Relatively. But relatively. So let's move on to mine, which mine is a little bit less high stakes than your guys. It's about judgment faces, about feeling judged and then disrespectfulness. People chew with their mouth open. I hate you guys. You are a monster. <laughs> Look, that's the thing. He he does it so often. Like I try, I try. I know, I know, I do it, but it's like it's so involuntary. It's like it I'm sucks. just like I'm like like if, I'll, like, if Fo was here, he would uh, <laughs> full heartedly agree along with uh, the bat. Uh, DJ, mm. he hates it so much. But like, it used I'll to be sitting all the there time. eating dinner. At like some restaurant or something, and and sometimes you know, like we have like a big family gathering at a restaurant, and I'm over here like eating my like I don't know like steak and mashed potatoes. You know? I don't know my salad. I mean, the last time we had a family get together, I had mushroom steak on top of mashed potatoes. It was delicious, and so I'm, I'm munching, right? Yeah. My cousin's just like, <laughs> look, look, man. I can't <laughs> look, man. <laughs> I came here to eat food. Now I hear you regurgitate it like a like a okay. like a parent bird choking it up into their chest. I can just see you. It'd be like a three year old. You just you just slam your hands down. Look, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. So actually, they funny, just don't know like what they're doing. Actually, wrong. the funny thing is, I have two younger brothers. The closest one to me is seven years younger than me, so I'm a little bit older, and. My other and my other brothers are two years apart in age, so yeah. they're like your quintessential, you know, just bros beating each other up and just being stupid. And we usually eat pizza a lot. Pizza is probably my favorite food, probably theirs too, or relatively, because one of my brothers doesn't really eat it; like he picks stuff off, and I, I hate it. I also hate that too. Not eating your food properly, just eat it. If you don't like it, say something. It's not difficult. <clears throat> but <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I'll, <laughs> but I'll be sitting there, and literally one of my brothers, like, every, you know what you do. <laughs> every yeah. single time I sit there, both of them chew with their mouth open. And I get it, you're kids. But when I was their age, before I was even there, before age, I was their age, uh, let me just go. My dad would he would eat me. with a fork and in, in a knife. That is not true. I did not start using knives until I was like nine. Knives till nine. <laughs> but like, I was being taught at like three not to chew with my mouth open. Because when you're at the table, now, I mean, it is a little different when you're by yourself, obviously, yeah. because etiquette doesn't really matter if you're alone or or, or with friends, because yeah. you're with friends. But if you're in a formal situation or if you're at the dinner table with your family, I, I've been taught that you have proper manners and you chew with your mouth closed because nobody wants to hear that. Nobody does. And I remember one time I told my dad no, and I kept on chewing. And what did I get? I got knuckles to the face because I got backhanded across the mouth. And every single time I want to do that to somebody because I'm like, guys, it's not hard. Close your mouth. But, I mean, my other biggest pet peeve is just global genocide. So, what? That escalated quickly. <coughs> so, moving on, what's your topic? So, <laughs> that was a great transition. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so, my topic... Is so. Oh you, yeah, you, I forgot. yeah. I know you're talking. Yeah, about. this goes completely a one A direction from we everything are, else. We are returning to a very familiar spot. In the yeah, a very uh, familiar spot, which you might know. The foe definitely will not. Is you've you've heard of Call of Duty Vanguard, right? Yeah. Well, you've you've heard the reviews, buddy. Twenty-two Call of Duty. Kind of like isn't it really bad? It is yeah. honestly horribly one of the worst Call of Duties ever played. Uh yeah. I have Blink that out. Blink that out. I have friends who own the game because all my friends buy the new Call of Duty every year. It's kind of it's, it's what they do. I personally don't because I'll like I I wait for reviews to come in mm-hmm. and I'll read smart. I will smart. read I'll read fan reviews to get more <coughs> personable reviews and I'll read the big magazines reviews. I know I know I know some of them like IGN. Yeah, they're definitely. Mm-hmm. They're in for the money. Yeah, but, but I mean, like some magazines and publishers, they legitimately like have gamers there who do, you know, truthfully review the game. And and Call of Duty Vanguard came out, and either way, I was not excited for the game because, well, I'm sorry, Peyton, but I don't want another World War II Call of Duty game. We've had so many World War II, like 
like the reason why something like Black Ops works so well was because it went to the Cold War. Uh-huh. Who wants a Cold War video game? Well, I do because Call of Duty made me love the Cold War. It's such a fascinating time period. And I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, even like Modern Warfare, it put it in the modern age, something we could all relate to. We we understand these conflicts in a sense because they're just they're just fictional versions of conflicts we already have experienced. Yeah. And World War II, yes, is the most well known war, the most researched war, yeah. the most taught war. Because it it is the most deadly war. Yeah, history. it did it did involve like almost the entire world. But like we definitely we definitely need games on World War Two because it helps educate, which I think is something Call of Duty needs to focus on a little more. Yeah, like they did used to focus on that quite a bit in their past. <laughs> yeah, not back so in the day, much back in the day when they only made World War Two games, and there's like on the main console versions, there's like five or six World War yeah. Two games. Oh yeah, and look. World War II is cool and all, but why not do something different like the Korean what War? What about World, World War One? World War One, because there's only like one mainstream World War One game that I know of, and that's Battlefield One. That game was good. That game was it was for really for like a fictional. I wouldn't say fictional, but <coughs> there were some fictional elements to the game. Yeah. They did it extremely well. They yeah. did it extremely well. Yes, there are some other games out there that capture World War One how it pretty much actually was. Gameplay is not too great or whatnot, but Battlefield One made it enjoyable. Yeah, made it highly enjoyable. So, but like, like Vanguard, we just didn't need another World War Two Call of Duty. Like, it was a really good breath of fresh air to break. Like, look, I know a lot of people hate the futuristic stuff. I thought Advanced Warfare was pretty decent. I thought Infinite Warfare's multiplayer and zombies were awful, and I, and I wasn't into Ghosts that much. There were a couple. I heard of- Ghosts was like. A- Natural failure. I I somewhat liked the campaign. It had a mm-hmm. lot. It had a lot of potential to be one of the best ones. And Black Ops Four is atrocious. Black Ops Three is atrocious. And so yeah, but then like the Modern Warfare reboot <clears throat> came out. Breath of Fresh Air. We're back in a time period that we understand now, and mm-hmm. it is the best looking Call of Duty game. That oh, yeah. game's cinematography and sound is top notch. And then we went back to the Cold War. Only this time we went into the '80s, which is super popular now. Which I think the '80s is a little bit of an overrated aesthetic. But it's still cool to see it in a Call of Duty game with Cold War. Yeah. So instead of trying to push the envelope and do something new, they just go back to something tried and true, as they said, when they made Call of Duty World War II, which was also a failure of a game. It wasn't a failure at first. However, as updates came out, yes, it started becoming a bit stale. And, and somehow, failing. some way, I watched the campaign... For Vanguard, because I'm not buying, I'm not buying this for sixty bucks. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be wasting my money on yeah. this game. Do you guys remember when companies used to actually make games for them to be good? Um, <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> Blizzard. Oh Excuse God, you, uh, Ubisoft. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm just like I, I watched the campaign. Somehow Vanguard's campaign looks like well, from like watching gameplay, worse than World War Two's. Oh yeah, I didn't even finish World War Two's. It was so boring. And Black Ops 3 is my least favorite campaign because it's just so convoluted and stupid. It's just, yeah. it's not a fun story. Vanguard's just looks flat out the most boring yeah. first person shooter game. And apparently, like you, you've told me before, is that most of the game is supposed to be a flashback. Which can work. Black Ops 1 did it. Yes, Black Ops 1 did it. But, but there was a mystery layered in between, and you got yes. multiple cutbacks in the first-person perspective back to the present so you could understand what was going on. And you were going through these flashbacks to understand what these numbers mean. Well, Vanguard wait, just tells the story out of the blue. Jason, what, what do the numbers mean? So, all right, so spoiler alert for a 12-year-old game. Also one of the most popular FPS shooters of all time. But whatever. So in Black Ops, you know, you, you've got the number sequences. Uh, the numbers are a broadcast that are supposed to activate Russian sleeper agents in the United States to release a deadly gas called oh, the six And they're being broadcasted from a ship in the Gulf. Which, awesome. We literally open up the game with all these numbers around our face and we don't know what's going on. And then at the end, you know, you open the doors and you're like, oh, I remember. And then, you know, you figure it out. Which is necessary with the flashbacks. That's the mm-hmm. only way that story could be told. It'd be the most boring game if you're sitting there the whole time like... Yeah, I don't know what the numbers mean. I mean, yeah, that happens, but you it's told in the flashbacks to understand when the numbers come in and the progression of the brainwashing. Yeah. 
Vanguard's is just like You yeah. meant to kill this dude. Oh wait, he finds out and he sends you away. Boom, yeah. done. There there are only two missions told in the present. For a game about tracking down Hitler's right hand man, why is it told in flashbacks? It's so dumb. It'd be such a cool story for after the war. You know, Hitler's right hand man is trying to build up Germany again after their surrender. And yeah. it's just told through this really secretive, really top secret, you know, mission back in like the late forties and early fifties. That'd be such a fun game. No. No. Yeah. We got flashbacks to World War Two. Well, not because I will I'll be on uh, Blizzard's side for this, is that the hunt for uh, what was Hitler's right, right hand man? Um, I, I, I honestly forgot his name. I know there was a notorious one, Adolf Eichmann, yeah. who was notorious for the killing of like millions of Jews. He was found in Argentina, and that was the most famous one being captured. And then the discovery of Bila Baviera, or Colonial Dignidad. But um, not much happens. Like there's not much conflict going on yeah. over there in Argentina, so that's kind of why they probably didn't, you know, put too much present day yeah, stuff well, into. Because well, I'm almost pretty sure they they really fictionalized this story, which would make up for so much. Like, look, top secret like espionage, skeleton crew kind of stuff is mainly mm-hmm. told nowadays in the modern times. Yeah. How cool would it be to see it in like its infancy of sorts back in the forties? That would be such a cool story. But, and it would make for really good gameplay opportunities, too. But they, It would have worked better if it wasn't during the attack of Berlin. Because when, during the beginning of World War II, there were uh, expeditionary forces from other nations going to other nations to help yeah. fight and stuff. So you would have these mesh of different ethnic groups and stuff. Yeah, yeah actually, that, that brings up another problem with Call of Duty's World War II games as a whole since Call of Duty World War II. We don't have diversity, really, in the characters. It's always the allies, like uh, the, the United Kingdom or the U.S., and the German. Those aren't the only countries that fought in World War II. Yeah. Now, I know in World at War, there weren't a lot of countries that you played as throughout the yeah. campaign. But you, you got to be Russian, you got to be American. In the multiplayer... You got to be a Nazi, you got to be a Soviet, you got to be a Japanese man, you got to be a U.S. guy. You got to be so many different people. They represented so many different factions throughout World War II. Which some people do get a little pissy yeah. about Nazis being in the game. But we need to understand that this game is telling, like... They're, it's telling history. That's it's, what history it, it's is. It's telling history. Which is why I think it's very disingenuous to only have... Oh, the Nazis are the only villains. Are we forgetting that the Japanese in Italy, like Italy, basically almost jump started World War Two? Mm-hmm. They were, they were the dudes who got into it first. Yeah. And yeah. We and then, got and then you also have yeah, yeah. Japan. Yeah. Bomb Pearl you also have Italy. Poland, which their struggles. Finland, which was a very major part on the Eastern Front. Yeah, defeating the Soviets in what three days yeah. almost. Well, speaking of Soviets, really sad thing is that World at War did this, but I feel like we need to get more perspective on the Soviets because in every Call of Duty game, the Russians are always the villains. It'd be so cool to understand the struggles of the Russians throughout World War II because oh, they yeah. lost so many men throughout oh, that yeah. war. Especially Stalingrad. Yeah. The the Siege of Stalingrad is one of the coolest battles in all of World War II because the Soviets were undermanned. Most of their dudes were dead. Either died of hypothermia throughout the mountains or, you know, died in battle. But they come in and they squash the Nazis and take back Stalingrad. That is such an awesome story. We got that once in a Call of Duty game, probably one of the most epic missions in Call of Duty history, when you have to take the knife out uh, and hang the flag. Oh, God. I'm trying to think. What, what was the one mission What was the mission during Stalingrad called? Um, I forgot what it was called, but I uh, but I know, like... The yes, game, so. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That was just you, the best. You, I mean, you, you take the knife out, and then you take the Soviet flag, you get carried up, and you get to put it on top of the building. Above, oh, you're thinking of the Berlin part. I'm thinking of Stalingrad. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there, there was also a Stalingrad mission. I don't know why I mix those two stuff. Either way, that part when you lift that Soviet flag, that was also awesome. Yeah. But even the, yeah, like the Stalingrad mission was fun. I just, I hate when Call of Duty just thinks it's Americans and Germans. Yes, the Germans were the big bad of World War II. But they also had Japan, Italy. Italy honestly needs to get more love in these games. I don't even think they've been in any of them. I don't think they've been in any. The only, like, Italian... 
forces I've seen, it was in Battlefield One, and that was World War One. <laughs> and because when you remember, Italy jump started World War Two. They they were kind of like the spark that you know lit the fire. Yeah, you know, like how in World War One it was the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Mm-hmm. In World War Two, it was what Italy was doing. And we never show that because we think, oh, Nazis set a game. Like, it's it's just not historical enough for me, even though it is fictional. They need to just add more diversity in what they tell. Because it, that that's what makes it cliche. Yes. Every single World War II story is just about how, oh, we Americans, we struggle against the Nazis. What about all the European nations who got taken over and just controlled by the Nazis for years because of World War II? What, what I would believe would be a great selling game would be the beginning of World War II. Not the mid or late where, the very US, where U.S. Soviets got entered. France has struggled. Poland struggled. Finland struggled. Denmark's all of them. Their interests, Greece. Yeah. You know, actually, one thing. Now, I know this would be super ballsy. But if they do make another World War II game, go back to the role that war approach where you do multiple countries. Well, let us play as a Nazi and see through their eyes. I know that sounds like I'm supporting Battlefield Nazis. Five, Battlefield Five did that with The Last Tiger, which was a masterpiece. But, like, it would be cool to see Call of Duty's take on what's it like having to be in the, the German perspective, the villain yeah. of this story. Pull, pull a Far Cry moment. Really. You, yeah, and I, the only thing that's probably I can see with that is obviously like you're playing as a Nazi. You're so playing as a Nazi, and a lot of people who just love to not look into the game at all or don't know their yeah. history are just like terrible game. Well, because also I mean, that guy. well, because most people because swastikas got taken out of the World War II Call of Duty, and yeah. they had they had to get replaced with the cross. And it's like it is a historical game telling a story set during a period in time where the Nazis were legitimately the biggest. Regime right. in the entire world. They were taking over countries every day. They were occupying everywhere, capturing so many people. They slaughtered people. Why are we getting rid of the one thing that like lets us know? Oh, that's who they are. Let's oh, not do that again. Are. Yeah, because remember, history is bound to repeat itself. Yes, unless we don't, you know, unless we teach it. Yes, we have to teach history in order to make sure it never happens again. And we're taking away. The Nazis out of all these stories, and well, <laughs> it's, kind of, it's, it's kind of ruining the value of telling that history. Yeah. I, I kind of and like how there's certain very philosophical talk about why history needs to be preserved. Why yeah. we're gonna become Nazis again? Well, again, like, again. I don't know who who was it that said that um, history is doomed to repeat itself. Many people have I, said. I, that. I know, Too but, many. but those who learn it. Are doomed to watch yeah right because well we know what happens yeah. but we can't do anything about well, it yeah and a lot of people are idiots and you know the only way an idiot wins an argument is when they pull you down to their level it's true which is why you don't start arguments with them. <laughs> but man we have reached our hour mark man wait we... one moment i have a beautiful quote by mark twain no matter how much evidence you show an idiot they will still believe their own side yeah, that is true. That is true, sadly. That is true. Especially in today's day and age. All right. <laughs> is that where we're calling it? Yeah, I'd say that's where we call it. This was, was a great podcast. Was yeah, a great we spent podcast. 30 minutes, almost 40 minutes talking about <laughs> our friend. Our but, friend. Leslie. Uh, yeah, yeah Le- Leslie. I'm going to have to do a lot of bleeping out of this, but that's the price you pay. That's the price you pay for when you have a person like Mother Earth playing. All right. Uh, so thank you all. Thank you all for arriving, Espe- for- especially those in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> yeah, because apparently yeah. you guys love us. <laughs> we'll take anybody who listens yeah. to our podcast. Yeah, we will well, take that, anyone. Well, that all being said, that's going to be today's Faux Scotland report. Uh, and uh, for Faux's sake, if uh, you guys, if, if anybody possibly sneezed during this podcast, God bless you. So with all that being said. Have a wonderful rest of your day, night, or whatever time it is for you. Yep. I'd like to thank anybody coming out to the stream. Uh, if anybody stick around, you guys are what keeps this thing going, keeps my streams going, whatnot. We're always here every Wednesday, 3.30. We try to be, although sometimes stuff has been out of our hands. Like oh, last yeah. week we were supposed to do things, but that kind of fell through. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I always stream Saturdays as well around 2 p.m. It's probably most likely Rainbow Succeed with... The man, the Scott here. I yep. am the man. 
you're the man. You need to get into Siege. I, I played it once. I was bored out of my mind. Anyways, let's anyway, well, that makes sense. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Adios.